Hey, this is your host Andres, and I welcome you to Where You Listening? An exploration of blackness in the songs we love. Today, we'll be listening to Canto das Tres Hases, the singing of the three races, composed by Mauro Duarte and Paulo Cesar Pinheiro, and performed by Clara Nunes. I want to start by giving a shout out to three people who helped me big time with the construction of this episode. First, Catarina Barbieri, Brazilian law researcher transplanted from Sao Paulo all the way to Norway, my dear brilliant friend who double-checked my translation of the song. Second, Adriana Blanco, Sambista, Capoeirista, yoga instructor, social worker, and one of the directors of the North Carolina Brazilian Arts Project. And finally, a huge, huge thank you to Pablo Guerreiro, our samba expert based all the way in Rio, recognized dance instructor, choreographer, dancer, artistic director of Academicus do Cubango, and samba researcher. I am so very thankful for the amount of wisdom and support you have shared with us. You should definitely check the Samba episode of our second season available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and most other platforms where Pablo continues to share his knowledge. Cata, Adri, Pablo, muito, muito obrigado de vocês. We asked Pablo and Adriana for some recommendations for today's episode. Interestingly, they both recommended Count to Duster's Hasses. We asked Adriana to elaborate on why she chose this song. This is what she told us. So I recommended the song O Canto das Tres Hasses, sung by Clara Nunes, because I think that the way the music fuses together with the storytelling is really indicative of my understanding of what samba represents, um, a complex integration of humanity in all of its different aspects and all of its complications. Let's go back to the makers of Canto das Tres Hases. First, the composers. Mauro Duarte was born in 1930 in Minas Gerais, but relocated with his family to Rio in 1933. He started composing at the early age of 10. Paulo César Pinheiro was born in 1949 in Rio and is a very prolific writer and poet. He also started very young, producing his first composition at the age of 14. Of the myriad songs Paulo César has produced, many were in partnerships with other artists and at least 700 of his songs have been recorded and re-recorded. In one of those partnerships, Paulo César and Mauro composed today's song, Count to das Tres Hases, which they wrote in 1974. The song was first performed by Clara Nunes, who was considered in life as one of the three queens of samba, with Alcioni and Beth Kerbal. Pablo and Clara were joined in marriage in 1975. Clara was born in 1943 in Minas Gerais and her father was a singer and a guitar player. After becoming an orphan at age 16, she started her artistic career after winning the regional stage of the competition called The Golden Voice ABC in 1960. In the words of Expedito Leandro Silva, researcher at the Catholic University of Sao Paulo, I quote, her songs dialogue with the world of samba and with the universe of Afro-Brazilian religions. Two episodes mark the consolidation of her life as an artist, he says. First, her incursion into the world of samba. Second, her first trip to Africa. Her experience in Africa woke her religious and spiritual side. In Canto das Tres Hases, Clara, with her deep ties to popular Brazilian music, becomes the perfect interpreter for a song that unveils the sorrow hidden in plain sight in the sounds of Brazil. Let's listen. Ninguém ouviu um solo sar de dor no canto do Brasil. Before we start going into the lyrics, I have a surprise for you. I am not going to torture you with my Portuguese accent. 
Instead, we have the honor of having Pablo Guerreiro recite the Portuguese lyrics of the song. So here is, in Pablo's voice, what Clara sings. Ninguém ouviu um soluçar de dor no canto do Brasil. Nobody heard a sob of pain in the singing and the sound of Brazil. Clara's singing immediately addresses one of the main messages of the song. It is possible for the unsuspecting listener of Brazilian music to miss the sorrow embedded in the sounds of Brazil. Clara continues. Um lamento triste sempre ecoou desde que o índio guerreiro foi para o cativeiro e de lá cantou. A sad lament always echoed since the time when the warrior native was put in captivity and from there the warrior native sung. In the construction of the underlying sorrow in the sound of Brazil, Clara sings first about the fight and ultimate decimation of the native indigenous peoples of Brazil, who constitute today less than 1% of the population according to the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics. Clara sings Negro entoou Um canto de revolta pelos ares Do quilombo dos palmares Onde se refugiou The black man intoned a chant of insurrection into the air At the quilombo dos palmares where he found refuge Clara's singing brings into the mix the sorrow of the black enslaved Africans brought to Brazil and their Afro-Brazilian children, many of whom were born into slavery themselves. The lyrics reference the Quilombo dos Palmares. Quilombos, as we saw in our previous episode, is the name given to communities formed by Africans and Afro-Brazilians who escaped from slavery. In English, these are called maroon communities. In Spanish-speaking Latin America, we know them as palenques. Among all Quilombos in Brazil, the Quilombo dos Palmares is arguably the most historically prominent. It existed for more than a hundred years, from approximately the end of the 16th century until about the first quarter of the 18th century. At its peak, Palmares is said to have reached a population of more than 20,000 people. In reality, Palmares was a network of smaller Quilombos who joined forces for survival and defense developing trade and new cultural and religious practices unique to their Afro-Brazilian experience. The largest of the Quilombos in the Palmares network, the Macaco Quilombo, served as the capital. Macaco was also the house of Ganga Zumba, one of the famous kings of Palmares. Fora a luta dos inconfidentes, pela quebra das correntes, nada adiantou. Clara sings. Fora a luta dos inconfidentes, pela quebra das correntes, nada adiantou. Besides the struggle of the inconfidentes, nothing helped to break the chains. E de guerra em paz, de paz em guerra, todo povo dessa terra, quando pode cantar, canta de dor. E de guerra em paz, de paz em guerra, todo o povo dessa terra, quando pode cantar, canta de dor. And from war to peace, from peace to war, all the people of this land, when they can sing, they sing their pain. Finally, the song brings the third race that makes the singing of the three races, the white race. For that, Clara's singing introduces the struggle of the Inconfidencia Mineira. The struggle was a failed plot for independence from Portugal which took place between 1788 and 1789. It involved various members of the white elite of Minas Gerais, including important economic, military and religious authorities. 
because the plot included such diverse members of the elite in Minas Gerais, although failed, the Inconfidencia Mineira became relevant for its symbolisms and its implications for the struggle of separation from Portugal. Among the members of the Inconfidencia Mineira, the most well-known is likely to be Joaquim José da Silva Xavier, aka Chiradentes, who was a member of the military. Chiradentes was the only member of the Inconfidencia Mineira who was executed. Other members of the high class in Minas Gerais were granted pardons. His body was quartered and displayed as a threat to future rebels. Clara Sanks. E ecoa noite e dia, ensurdecedor. Ai, mas que agonia! O canto do trabalhador. And it echoes night and day, deafening. Oh, what an agony it is! The workers' song, the workers' chant. Esse canto que dizia. Esse canto que devia ser um canto de alegria, sou apenas como um soluçar de dor. That chant, that song, that should be a song of happiness, sounds only like a sob of pain. Oh! We are about to experience a change in the pace of this song, so I want to bring some of Adriana's commentary regarding the music of Canto das Tres Hasses. The build up with the storytelling in the beginning to when the beat drops, when the batucada and the enredo rhythm begins is contagious. I think the music, just without even going into the words, stirs this complexity of feelings, of a somber attitude, with a sense of resilience and joy. is a common theme that unites the verses of the song. The sorrow is part but not all of it. The sorrow is coupled with the struggle to overcome. For instance, the struggle of the Indo Guerreiro, the warrior native, is highlighted, and the song imagines insurrection chants being sung at the mythical place of the Quilombo de Spilmarish. Although Palmarish withstood many attacks from the Portuguese and even the Dutch, it eventually failed, taking with it, in the process, many Afro-Brazilians who refused to go back to slavery and opted to die fighting. Among those, King Sumbiji Palmatish is a prominent figure still celebrated and often mentioned in Capoeira songs. <laughs> The inclusion of the Inconfidencia Mineira in the song is definitely an interesting one. In some dimensions, it contrasts with the first two parts of the sorrow in the sounds of Brazil, the indigenous and the Afro-Brazilian. This contrast is due to the fact that some members of the Inconfidencia Mineira were slave owners themselves. In fact, the members of the struggle were split between those proposing the emancipation of slave individuals born in Brazil, notice the absence of enslaved Africans, and those advocating for maintaining slavery as an economic necessity. Sounds familiar? 
Canto das Tres Raças was written and released in the middle of the authoritarian military dictatorship imposed in Brazil in 1964. In the words of authors Paulo Fontes and Larissa Correa, I quote, It would be no exaggeration to affirm that the civilian military coup carried out in Brazil in 1964 was a coup against workers. The song presents here a broader link to the sorrow of the Brazilian worker. The Brazilian worker, the song suggests, was a new source of deafening sorrow underlying the sound of Brazil during the dictatorship. The sorrow of natives and enslaved Africans and Afro-Brazilians trickles not only through the sound of Brazil, but also through its color, through its ethnic composition. In fact, Many Brazilians are the product of race mixing. They are categorized as pardos, in other words, browns, by the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics. In his book, National Rhythms, African Roots, researcher John Charles Chestin suggests that this race mixing, miscegenation, mestizaje or mestizaje is both a reality and a foundational myth of Latin American nations. On the one hand, mestizaje, mestizaje, is a reality, revealed in the ethnic composition of our Latin American countries. In Brazil, for instance, pardos made about 47% of the population as of 2019. On the other, mestizaje is also a foundational myth, serving the political purpose of creating national harmonious identity out of diverse, culturally different groups. It is a myth because, as John Charles writes, I quote, it obscures a history of bondage and exploitation. Clara Nunes often celebrated Brazilian mestizagem in her songs. However, hers was not a blind celebration of miscegenation. As author Silvia Maria Jardim Brugger highlights, Clara did not associate miscegenation with a supposed racial harmony. Instead, Clara's singing explains the conflicts. Several songs in her repertoire denounce situations of exploitation and social inequality, from slavery in the past or from the harsh day-to-day -day life of the workers today. Adriana also commented on this feature of the song. This is what she had to say. The song illustrates the myth of a post-racial society that Brazil has tried so hard to propagate and it clearly shares that that's not that is not necessarily what's happening there is not equality in brazil thank you for being here with me today if you weren't listening now you are